Hello, today we're going to be looking at log cabin, how to make a log cabin block. To start with, I'll be doing a brief history of log cabin um, with where it turns up around the world and some lovely photographs to look at and that kind of thing. If you're not particularly interested, uh, skip ahead to the making of and you can find that in the timestamps in the description. Saw log, roof pattern, the block house, stock house, log house, Canadian. Those are all names for log cabin. As a pattern, it turns up in Sweden, Japan on tamari balls, Denmark, Scotland, Ireland, the Isle of Man, Australia, Canada, the United States, Peru, <laughs> New Zealand and Wales. And that was in no particular order. About five years ago, I gave a lecture on the origins of log cabin and why it was such a brilliant design. From a designer's point of view, it's a brilliant design. I can't find the lecture notes, so I've had to re-research. And actually, I'm really glad I did. My jumping off point was being a recipient of the National Geographic, which I couldn't lay my hands on. Some years ago, there was a whole article about the wrappings on Egyptian mummies, and they look like log cabin. Now, even though they're woven or wrapped, and they're not stitched down you can see that they very definitely look like the log cabin design that we would recognize today and it's quite interesting when I was researching this and looking at various photographs of different quilts through a lot of books I have to say I noticed that if you actually imagined yourself looking down on a pyramid in an aerial view it would look like a log cabin block. I'm sure someone's come up with that before, but I just thought it was interesting. It seems to be a pretty universal design. We really don't know where it came from. As I've already said, it turns up in Egypt throughout the whole of what used to be the Roman Empire. I can't find any references in India or China, but that doesn't mean there aren't any because basically a good idea is a good idea. It does turn up in South America. I don't know too much about it other than it's um, a floor design. I couldn't find a picture. But given that there's quite a strong tradition of a type of patchwork and um, layering of fabrics in that area, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if, again, it's just someone thought, what a good idea this would be. It also is in ancient Greece as um, mosaic designs as well. And one of the things I'm really interested in is um, applied design being able to be adapted into quilt blocks. So for this one, it also turns up in parquetry, basket weaving and cloth weaving itself. So I thought I'd show you a few um, pictures of uh, geometric designs from Roman mosaics. And so the first one is actually what is the beginnings of a log cabin block. And then the others are designs that hopefully you'll recognise as uh, quilting blocks and borders that we still use. So I managed to find one that looked like chevron as though it was made from half square triangles, a flying geese border, tumbling blocks and a double wedding ring. There was actually a lot more in there. I thought I'd leave it at that. So as a design, we know that it's been around for at least 3000 years. I'm guessing those people that wound those wrappings onto those ancient mummies they'd already seen that design somewhere else they didn't just well maybe they did I don't know but they didn't just sort of rock up on that day and go hey I'm going to do this really intricate wrapping so it's it's one of those designs we know like I say it's at least 3,000 years old and it continues into um, applied different things, you know, on flooring, brickwork, mosaics, all the way through to the present day. And I would guess that as the first example that I found is in ancient Egypt in textile, as a textile design, it has also been used for all that time as well. I can't prove that because here's the thing. Most of us don't store our textile things, so quilts and all the rest of it in the perfect conditions to survive for 3,000 years. 
So the earliest pattern I could find that looked very much like log cabin is from around the late 18th century. Again, I'm guessing that, that the first person that made that quilt didn't just suddenly come up with it. They would have probably seen something very similar before. And the fact that its prevalence is all over Europe and then everywhere where Europeans migrated to other parts of the world, so Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, and they took a lot of their different sort of cultural influences with them, we then see a massive proliferation of this design as well. Most of the examples that we have to look at today are from the 19th century and it seems to have been one of those things particularly in the 1860s onwards as being quite a status thing again using silks and velvets and all the rest of it and that brings me on to the next bit which is there is two ways of making log cabin and when I first wanted to have a go at making it a long long time ago the only reference I could find was in a good the good housekeeping needlecraft book which was published in 1979 so obviously research and methods and techniques have changed an awful lot since then but i just want to read you a little bit it says log cabin patchwork log cabin patchworks were invented entirely for decorative reasons as they use a great deal of fabric and are very often worked in silks and velvets or with ribbons they should be dry cleaned rather than washed as the strips are formed in folds and may lose their sharpness during washing. Log cabin patchworks are worked in square blocks composed of half of light and half of dark strips stitched and folded around a small central square. The central square which is the focal point of the block should be in a colour contrasting with the light and dark strips. Well, I don't know about you but that put me off making it ever. Obviously that is a technique of making log cabin but it's not the one that we use today generally speaking I can totally understand if you've got things like silks and velvets which would work better as a as a folded item or with um, wool as well because you can hide all the stitches underneath I can see how that worked and I understand certainly in Scotland and the Isle of Man that that was the older technique of doing log cabin originally and then they would stitch that to a backing fabric it wouldn't be quilted in the way that we do today so the method we're going to use is the strips method more than 20 years ago I started making this quilt this is my very first log cabin quilt I have made other log cabin quilts and finished them and in fact if you want to see one of those if you look at the information card that will take you to the silk quilt silk tie video and right at the end of that there is an example of one of my log cabin quilts so I decided it was time to finish this one so I laid it out and then discovered that I was missing four blocks so I decided to share with you the process of making or how I make log cabin blocks so to start off I need to cut a two and a half inch strip because I want the finished centers of the log cabin to be um, two inches square and then you need a selection of light and dark fabrics it's all about the contrast with log cabin the basics of it are literally just building strips around a square and two sides are light and two sides are dark so when you've cut your first strip find the light strip that you want to stitch on and I stitch it on together so right sides together and stitch all the way down enough to cut off four two and a half inch pieces and that's because I'm making four blocks it will still look like a scrappy um, log cabin because I'll mix and match as I go through then iron it open and cut off however many pieces you want to make blocks I would say always cut off uh, even numbers so when I'm making log cabin I don't pre-cut the lengths of the sides because you're positioning fabrics all the way around, there's quite a variety of stretch, of fabric weight, even in quilting cottons. So I literally just cut strips. Um, I think they're anywhere between 
um, two inches and an inch and a half and I will mix and match all the different widths as well because at the end when you've finished making the log cabin block all you need to do is trim it down to the right size and these will all be trimmed down to 11 inches square and how I decided on 11 inches square was I took the smallest block out of a whole batch of them measured that and then cut all the other ones down to match and I will be putting five rows of blocks or logs if you want to call them that all the way around my squares and I know that'll get me past 11 inches so you just keep working your way around the most important thing is on the first way around you need to, so you start off with your centre and your first log and you've stitched those and cut them in a complete unit. Then you go around with your next light colour and then you keep covering the sides of the square until you end up with a square within a square. Once you've done the first row, it gets a lot simpler. It's a lot less of keeping your eye on making sure you're stitching the logs in the right place and you just keep working your way around and a, and a handy hint is to cover the side that has two seams on it and each time you cover the side with two seams on you know that you're on the right side but you have to wait until you've put the first four logs around the outside to do that so it's on the second row and the most important thing is to stitch fairly accurately a quarter of an inch seam allowance or whatever seam, seam allowance you're using as long as it's consistent it doesn't really matter on this and iron after every single one which is why I chain stitch four blocks at a time uh, so that I don't have to keep running to the ironing board and to trim it off I use at this stage I use scissors just because it's easier to let the scissors guide along the outer edge and you can sit and do that at the sewing machine I mean you could even finger press them if you wanted to or use a, a mini iron and stay at the sewing machine which would make it a bit quicker it's a really good way of using up leftover strips when you've made a, a quilt and you might have binding left over for example you can cut it into two two strips down the fold or if you've got leftover bits and pieces of fabric or old tablecloths pillowcases you know all of those things for upcycling this is brilliant because you waste so little fabric and you really can use the smallest pieces that are still good out of something that's been used before and of course that appeals to my little upcycling heart <laughs> And then the most brilliant thing about log cabin for me, aside from how economical and kind of eco-friendly it is in that way, is the placement of the blocks just you can have hours of fun and in fact there are hundreds of different layouts that you can do and I'll I'll put a few up on the screen for you so there's light and dark barn raising which is my favorite there's zigzags there's all there's just loads of them the only thing I would say is if you're going to design anything with log cabin is bear in mind that any design feature will require an even number and they're usually based on fours to um, get the effect that you want and you can do all sorts of amazing things and I should I should say a few honorable mentions for some books that you might want to look into and I'll put these in the description as well but there's um, the book Artful Log Cabin Quilts by Katie Pasquini Massapust and there's Log Cabin Landscapes by Dorothy Stapleton um, and even do you remember when watercolour quilts were really really fashionable back in the early 2000s there's um, watercolour log cabin quilts from the Palouse Patches and it's absolutely oh I love it it's that real full on floral Victoriana type thing I just absolutely adore it I might have to make one I've also put all of the other other books that were where photographs and text has been referenced as well and and uh, the the top one I would say if you want to know more about the history is an absolutely brilliant book called Making Connections Around the World with Log Cabin and it's by Janet Ray and Dinah Travis it is phenomenal the research is, that has gone into that is just something else and it's really really interesting there's also quite a lot of making ideas in there as well
Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to support um, me and the channel, you can now buy us a coffee. We've recently set up a Kofi or coffee account and the link will be in the description. And I really appreciate your help. Thank you. See you again soon. Bye.